Hi everybody. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about using Visual Studio for Python development. So now you probably, many of you are using Visual Studio Code for Python development, but this is using classic Visual Studio. I know there's many .NET developers out there that it, they spend their day in Visual Studio and it has um, Python support. Um, has had for a while, um, but is continued to improve. Uh, it continues to improve in how they can do it. And there's a nice article out here um, from January of 2023 that talks about uh, Python. So you can go and, and find that. Um, you can see the URL up there if you'd like to copy that and, and go to it. So let's see what this looks like. Uh, first of all, I'm going to start up Visual Studio 2022, and I am going to select Continue Without Code here. I don't have Python configured, so the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to do that. So I'm going to do New Project, and um, we'll pick Windows because I happen to be on Windows. I don't believe that you can that there's Python support yet for Visual Studio for Mac. Um, so this will be a Windows thing, right, things right, thing right now. You'll notice we have Python, though, as one of the languages. And the really cool thing here is you'll see that there are several different options for you, right? And we're going to start with just a Python application. We'll come back and look at some of these other ones, which look really interesting. The cookie cutter, classifier, and clustering regression projects. So, um, so let's see if... Uh, just just to talk about the workloads a little bit, if we ins say in, uh, pick install more tools and and features, you'll notice the option right here is the one that you want to check. So if you don't uh, see those options that I showed, you're going to want to come in here and turn this on, and then go ahead and install those. But we'll get that out of the way for right now. So let's go ahead and just start with a simple Python application. And um, so this is fine for now. Just say Python demo. Same thing as you always have with Visual Studio. Um, you can pick a location for it. Um, I'm going to let it default to that. Um, it will create a folder for you for the, with your project name. It's very similar to what you have with normal .NET projects in Visual Studio. And then we'll go ahead and, okay, so now we are in, uh, we're actually in Python. We can do print, uh, hello, and we can go ahead and run this. And over here, it runs. So, cool. Works great. Um, you can declare variables. Um, let's see. Um, of course, the cool thing is you have a fully featured integrated development environment. So you can set breakpoints like you do normally in Visual Studio. We'll go ahead and hit start here. You'll see the little window pop up and, and we're stopped here. And you can see here's our variables. We can look at them like we normally do. We can step through the code like we normally do. You'll notice um, um, all that works just the way you would expect it to. Now, the one thing that's always tricky, I believe, whenever you're working with Python is uh, the Python environments or packages that you're working with. You'll notice that um, this is all of the different um, packages that are kind of installed by default or available to you. So um, if you right click here, let me let me go back a little bit. So this is this is Solution Explorer again, just normal Visual Studio stuff. Here we have Python environments. It tells you right here that we're in Python 3.9. And if we right click on this, uh, we can add a new environment. So that's kind of cool. And if we right click on Python 3.9, we can select Manage Python Packages. 
And if there is one that is not installed yet, For example, OpenCV Python. We'll let this catch up here in just a second. It's just kind of going through its uh, process. And you'll notice this has got a Conda configuration. Um, uh, my Python interpreter by default is Conda. So that's the ana Anaconda. Um, but in any case, that's why you're seeing so many of the uh, different packages already installed. And so if you scroll down through here, this is, this is the things that are already in, in, installed under Conda. So, um, yeah, so anyway, great, uh, great way to develop in Python if you're used to Visual Studio. And Visual Studio is a great integrated development environment and if you love using it um, I believe that you'll find this to be um, really useful so again um, let's do OpenCV Python and we'll see what happens here I haven't you'll notice down here it's gonna go do th go through and install yeah and I um, I did this. I did this on my other machine, and it, and it installed just fine. So um, it's probably because I'm running under the Conda environment, and I need to go uh, actually uh, do that. I can try it with PyPy instead of uh... yeah. So it's going to do better here, probably. I'll do a pip install. And so you'll notice down here it says it successfully installed it fine. So then the question is, does it does it actually work, right? So let's uh, CV2, right? And we can go ahead and write our code. Uh, for example, we go. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and create a images folder in our uh, Solution Explorer. So let's move some of this stuff out of the way, and um, let's see. Right here under Python demo, we're just going to add a a new folder. And we're going to call it images. Um, I'm going to pause the video for just a second. I'm going to go grab an image and po paste it in here. Okay, so I've copied. Uh, I've actually copied the image that we used last week, um, or last video. This bird image here, and um, you can see that it immediately brought it up in the editor, and um, that's great. So let's go ahead and load this. Let's go ahead and load this image. So and I apologize this is a bit of a repeat on the cropped images on the cropped image video, but um, I thought I'd take advantage of this. And so I won't uh, I'll kind of pause this and write the rest of the code real quick. All right, so we've got our uh, we've got our code here. One thing I need to do is actually load the image. So um, pretty easy. cv 2imread and we already have the file name that we're going to use. You'll notice I have um, autocomplete. IntelliSense, everything works the way it's supposed to, the way we'd, you would expect. So again, we're going to, um, I've put the bird in this images folder, bird.jpg in this images folder, which is a picture of a bird. Um, we're going to load it, get the dimensions of it, and then crop it down. We're just going to take 100 pixels all the way around the border of the image, and then write out the resulting cropped image 
as another file called crop bird. So we'll go ahead and run this. Again, I'm going to set the breakpoints in here just so you can see that it's it's really just regular old you know Visual Studio functions. You can see here's the image. You can see the variables down here uh, and being able to dive into the data um, that you've got. And we can step over again, look at height and width. Uh, height of 617, width of 1038. And then we're going to crop it and write it out. So I'm just going to let this go ahead and run. And we don't have any display going on, so it's just going to be done with that. And then did the cropped image actually in, end up in here? Um, it did. And so we'll... We'll go and um, we'll have to go find it. It's buried inside of where my solution is. And again, because we have Visual Studio, we can right click on our project and we can do open um, open the path up. And here's our crop bird, and so I'm just going to drag this over here so that we can see it. So here's our here's our crop bird, here's our original bird, and I know the images are, um, you know, kind of zoomed in a little bit, but uh, in any case, um, yeah. So a great uh, little great Python development environment if you're used to Visual Studio. Um, I, again, I know many people are using Visual Studio Code, and that's a great environment as well. Um, but if you already are using Visual Studio and you don't want to learn another integrated development environment and you're doing Python code now in addition to your .NET development, this is a great option. So we'll, again, look at some of those, um, those uh, projects that you can create with Python and just see how those work in upcoming videos. Thanks for watching, and I uh, hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about Visual Studio 2022 and the, the new Python capability that's there. Thanks.